Hello everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play a Golden Wake. Last time, Alfie got a bit upset because he was not the one picked to be the first mayor of Coral Gables, and he's now just feeling underappreciated. And now also, there is a storm on the way, so we need to get to safety, and let's, but let's take a look at these people first. This is quite the party, you're impressed by the dancers' stamina, and they never seem to tire. Let's go join them. Seeing as you've got two left feet, you'd think you'd best not join in. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, uh, we're in this brand new uh, Biltmore Hotel, which was uh, built in Coral Gables, and it seems to be uh, pretty famous now. I believe that there's a history thing here. But I think it, uh... Yeah, there is, but I think it spoils something, so we'll wait just a bit for that one. Oh. Excuse me, pal. I'm looking for a fellow named Tom Walsh. You know him by any chance? I'm afraid not, sorry. Perfectly fine. I suppose I'll just have to wait for him upstairs. Who was that? That's a very uh, recognizable fella from the, from the 20s. Haven't I seen that face somewhere before? <laughs> okay, so that I, I thought that was going to happen later, but that happened now, so now we can look at the history. It's not any big thing. He doesn't... That's the only time that guy appears. But he mentions Tom Walsh, so remember that. Al Capone makes a small cameo in this part of the game, which is a bit of a gag. If you go to the Biltmore Hotel and take the tour, and ask them about the Al Capone suite, the tour guide will probably smile, but inside they'll roll their eyes. Because the Everglades suite on the 13th floor, which is depicted here as Fatty Walsh's speakeasy, is often called the Al Capone Suite, although it's never really been established whether Al Capone actually ever stayed at the Biltmore Hotel. The Everglades Suite has had many famous occupants, including the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, President Eisenhower, President Clinton, President Obama, but it's not really certain if Al Capone ever did. But it makes a good story. Actually, Al Capone had a mansion in Miami Beach later on, and in April 1930, he was hanging around in Miami Beach, and people were not happy about that. So local law enforcement enforced something called the Chicago Plan, which was basically a way to run Al Capone out of town by constantly harassing him. He was arrested a few times, and he claimed to be innocent, but he was accused of perjury, having said that he hadn't been allowed a telephone call or something like that. And when he went to trial at the Miami-Dade courthouse, the judge acquitted him. However, despite being acquitted, Capone was so annoyed by the fact that the police were constantly harassing him that he decided to move out of town, which made everyone very, very happy. However, after serving time in Alcatraz, Capone moved back to Miami in 1939 and lived there until 1947 when he died in his Palm Island mansion. All right, so that's interesting. All right, let's uh, get on out of here because the storm's coming. Just like I said. Where is everybody? Surely this hurricane can't be that serious a threat. But as we know from the history thing, it is. Is there a history thing here? There is. The crown jewel in George Merrick's Coral Gables project is without a doubt the Biltmore Hotel. Merrick decided that he wanted to build a luxury hotel and joined forces with John McKenty Bowman, who was the head of the Biltmore chain of hotels, in order to build a Miami version of the Biltmore in 1925. It cost $10 million and was completed in 1926. The main tower of the Biltmore Hotel is modeled after the Giralda Tower in Seville, Spain. There's also a tower in downtown Miami known as the Freedom Tower, also based on La Giralda. As is seen in the game, during the 1920s, the Biltmore Hotel was host to many famous people, as well as the rich and well-to-do. When the Great Depression came in the 1930s, the Biltmore still managed to draw a crowd. The Olympic-sized swimming pool was notable, not only for its size, but also because Olympic medalist Johnny Weissmuller used to practice and train there. He would later go on to play Tarzan in several Hollywood movies. During the 30s, the pool was used for several aquatic shows, including one featuring a boy diver, who was known as Jackie Ott, the Diving Tot. During World War II, the Biltmore Hotel was converted into a hospital, since several troops were sent to train in South Florida, and it remained a VA hospital until 1968. 
Afterwards, the Biltmore Hotel was more or less abandoned, until 1973 when it was given to the city of Coral Gables and put on the National Register of Historic Places. After that, it remained abandoned for another 10 years, until 1983 when renovations began. It reopened in 1987 and remains a luxury hotel to this day, although, given its questionable history, many people claim that it's haunted, not just by the ghost of Fatty Walsh, but also by all the people who died there when it was a hospital. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'd have a, I'd have a questionable history. I mean, Obama was there. No, sorry, I'm kidding. All right, so let's uh, get out of here. And we move on to chapter three, after the hurricane. Oh Gentlemen, thank you for meeting me here. I realize this hurricane has dealt a significant blow to our operations, but don't be alarmed. As you can see, our old sales office withstood much of the hurricane's damage, much like the city of Coral Gables itself. Things may be bad around the rest of Miami, but we will come back from this. In the past week, I've sent letters to our landowners, assuring them that we've taken minimal damage. Coral Gables will rise from the ashes like a great phoenix. Let's carry on as usual. We have a lot of catching up to do. Alfie. Before you go, could I speak with you a moment? I need a rather large favor from you. You don't say. What might that be? I've been hearing some worrying rumors concerning the Biltmore Hotel. What sort of rumors? It's no secret that organized crime has seen a spike lately, but I never thought it would reach us. I've heard stories of illicit gambling and alcohol being served somewhere in the hotel. I would appreciate it if you could investigate and report back to me. Okay, I'll see what I can find. And Alfie, please be discreet. I'll try. So yeah, the storm did quite a bit of damage, set them back, but uh, hopefully they will be able to uh, rebuild. So uh, we're back in the Biltmore Hotel again. Here's a uh, doorman. Benny the hotel doorman stands by, waiting for guests to enter and exit so he can greet them or say goodbye. Everything good with you, Benny? Good enough, Mr. Banks. Thanks for asking. Glad to hear it. Keep up the good work. And he has one line. Hotel clerk sits at the desk looking quite bored. Excuse me. How may I help you, sir? Don't I know you from the Hotel Belmont on Flagler Street? Yes, I used to work there a few years ago. I thought so. That was the first place I stayed when I got here. Things certainly seem to have changed for the both of us since then. It does seem that way, sir. Okay. Anything interesting you can tell me about the hotel? It hasn't even been open for a year, but already I've seen more celebrities and high society folks in here than I knew existed. This place is really something special. It's definitely Mr. Merrick's finest work. That's great. You don't happen to have noticed any strange goings-on lately, have you? I'm not quite sure I follow. What do you mean, exactly? I'm thinking of certain activities which are best kept behind closed doors. I'm sure I have no idea what you're talking about, sir. And if I can offer a bit of advice, I don't think you should be asking these sorts of questions. Maybe he does know something. Did the hurricane cause much damage to the hotel? Luckily, no. It knocked over a few trees, but no major structural damage. The hotel I used to work at downtown, though, oh, that got completely destroyed. That's a real shame. I'll say. Would have been more so if I'd still been working there. I'll let you get back to work. Yes, sir. That's a good thing you got out of there. Well, he obviously knows something, but uh, we need to convince him to tell us. The only thing we have in our inventory is some cash. So yeah, the fact that it's showing up in your inventory means that you gotta use it. That's the only way I was able to figure out what to do here, is the fact that I just happen to have money with me. Now, you look like a knowledgeable sort. No reason to keep all that information to yourself, is there? How about you let slip just a little bit, and I'll be on my way. Nobody will be the wiser. You surreptitiously, surreptitiously slip a few bills into the hotel clerk's hand. I don't know anything for certain, but you might want to have a look on the 13th floor. Now please, go away and don't talk to me about it anymore. Fine. That wasn't so hard, was it? Alright, alright. Calm down. 
So something on the thirteenth floor, huh? Owen, who's this suspicious looking fella? This man looks incredibly nervous. He seems to be waiting for someone. What are you waiting for, buddy? Can I help you with something? The man just glares at you and hisses, Get lost! under his breath. Yeah, I guess uh, Francisco Gonzalez didn't want to draw a character portrait for this guy, so it just says the dialogue he said in the uh, flavor text. But he's obviously waiting for something, so let's uh, have ourselves a seat and see what happens. Christ, Jimmy, could you maybe try looking any more obvious? The two men began having a whispered discussion. You struggle to listen in. So all I gotta do is knock and tell him I'm there for Fatty's party. The nervous looking man nods his head. Great. Thanks for the heads up. I'll see you upstairs. That was certainly interesting. It seems there really is something going on behind the scenes in this place. So, uh, yeah, we know that it's on the 13th floor, and we know the password to get in, so uh, we can go ahead and check it out. Sort of. Ah, oh, there's some history. Earlier in the commentary, I mentioned that there were some other factors which contributed to the end of the land boom. Alfie talks about a ship that sank in the harbor, and you can briefly see a newspaper article talking about the Prinz Valdemar. The Prinz Valdemar was a schooner that was built in 1891 and was used for several years, but in 1926 it was retired, and it was taken to the Miami Harbor with the intent of making it a floating hotel. Unfortunately, something happened, and it sank. Now, at that point, railroad shipping rates had increased significantly because of the population boom, so people weren't too happy about that. And the Prince Valdemar sinking in the harbor meant that no other ships could get inside, so at that point, the sea routes were blocked as well. This was kind of a fiasco, and Miami started getting a lot of negative press behind it. So as a result of this, the prices that had been going up all these years stopped, and without any income, the real estate bubble burst. So the sinking of the Prince Valdemar was really the last nail in the coffin for the real estate boom. Mm, that's too bad. So yeah, I had kind of mentioned that before, but I d didn't know it was actually a part of the uh, history thing. I forgot about that. All right, so uh, it seems like there's something going on behind this door. You can kind of hear something. Yeah, who is it? We have a few options, Alfie Banks. Al Capone, the police. Alfie Banks, I work for George Merrick, the man who built this hotel. Well, la di da. I don't know you, and as far as I'm concerned, I got no business with you. So kindly score him out, would you? Okay, that didn't work. Yeah, who is it? Yeah, it's Al Capone, see? You better let me in or there's gonna be trouble. You trying to be cute? Get out of here. Ah, <laughs> uh, that was an okay impression, I guess. <laughs> yeah, who is it? Police, this is a raid. Nice try, but you knock too soft for a copper. Now get out of here before you start some real trouble. Hmm. Yeah. I'm here for Fatty's party. Why didn't you say so? Come on in. There we go. And I do love this scene. It's uh, not quite as uh, out there as the whole uh, Dancing Charleston, but I love these uh, silhouettes in the foreground that are performing. It is just amazing. Yeah, I, I, well, one of the reasons I love this game is simply for the aesthetic. He just did a really good job with all this. So uh, we take a look around. There is indeed a speakeasy. There's illegal gambling, illegal drinking. So, yeah, I guess... Uh, what you would call illicit activities simply for the fact that the government says you can't do them. We got some paintings. An interesting painting of a lone tree on a mountain. The paint depicts a service station at dusk. Alright. I love the music here too. The roulette table sits in the center of the room, serving as an oasis of gambling for the speakeasy patrons. 
So as you can see, things are actually starting to pick up a little bit in this game. Dorman looks like someone put a suit on a gorilla. He eyes you with disdain. Some party, huh? Dorman just nods. He doesn't seem the chatty type. Well, the server. If server stands by himself, eyeing the party with a bored expression. I feel sorry for him, but he probably knows plenty about what goes on during these parties. Say, would you happen to know where I can find this fatty character? Mr. Walsh rarely mingles with his guests. The only way you can see him is if you were VIP. A uh, VIP, huh? Well, thanks for the information. Okay. Now, it is actually really important what he said. You need to be a VIP, but uh, it's not really as obvious as I'd like it to be. Now, uh, we look at this bookcase. The bookcase looks strangely out of place in the room. I wonder if maybe it's provided for the more boring parties. Yeah, the nice book party. I'm boring like that, I guess. <laughs> you take a closer look at the bookcase. Now, uh, this stumped me for so long as to what I was supposed to do here. You have all these books here, and you have the numbers 1, 2, 3. Three number of gold plaques occupy the bottom part of the shelf. They must be significant somehow. And you have uh, some amazing uh, authors here, especially, uh, I love James Joyce. It's cool boy, Arthur Doyle. Uh, some of these I haven't heard of, like Ibsen. It's probably Virginia Woolf, and Ernest Hemingway. S. Scott Fitzgerald, oh, he's good. Voltaire, perhaps never heard of him. Then, of course, uh, Charles Dickens. Shakespeare, Oscar Wilde, Homer, Mark Twain, so good stuff here, but uh, we're not here to really uh, read the books. We need to do something here. Remember the guy said that you need to be a VIP. Well, in order to solve this puzzle, you need to spell out B-I-P. You hear a click and a low rumble as the bookshelf begins to move. There? Wait, before I... Uh, no, no mystery. Oh, well, well, who do we have here? I'm Alfred Banks. You must be fatty. Now, now, let's not start things off on the wrong foot. It's Mr. Walsh. Until I say otherwise, Savvy. Who are you working for, anyway? George Merrick. Oh, a real estate jobby, huh? Let me guess. The Big Cheese sent you along to do some gumshoeing and find me because he's heard we're taking over his little pet project. Am I right? Thought so. Come on over here. Let's have a little talk. Now, you may look like a bit of a chump, but you don't strike me as one. I'm gonna level with you. I know who you are. You've been helping out this little project for quite some time, haven't you? I have, yes. For all the good that's done me. Before you go running back to Merrick and sing like a stoolie, let me make you a proposal. What say you leave that real estate baloney behind, then come work for me? I beg your pardon? Sorry, did I not make it highbrow enough for you? I'm offering you an opportunity to leave behind your current employer and find more lucrative prospects with my organization. I could use a guy like you, a guy I know can get things done. Why on earth would I want to join the mob? Oh, let's face it, the hurricane was the last nail in the coffin for the real estate market. The bubbles burst. You ain't got no future in that business, and you know it. Besides, I'm trying to help the people. There's a serious desire for alcohol in this country, and I'm providing it at reasonable prices. Wouldn't you rather be involved with a noble cause instead of swindling people by selling the worthless land? I... Come on, what do you say? I can't. I'm sorry. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't a tempting offer, but I just don't think I'm suited for it. Uh-huh. Just take a little time to think things over. If you change your mind, come back and see me. I'll be here. Hmm, so it seems Mr. Walsh wants us to work for him instead of Merrick. And, uh, well, uh, Alfie's been a bit unsatisfied with Mr. Merrick, so that's a possibility, and hello. Uh, fatty, fatty clearly loves his ladies. The painting shows a buxom reclining female. The painting certainly leaves little to the imagination. Yeah, tiny pixelated boobies, uh-oh. 
Let's see. Uh, this is uh, the guy that talked to the other what guy. What are you looking at? Oh, sorry. <laughs> you don't think he's much of a talker. Let's see any history? Tom Walsh, also known as Fatty Walsh, was a New York mobster who had connections to Chicago and was an associate of Dutch Schultz and Lucky Luciano. In 1928, he was questioned for his involvement in the murder of Arnold Rothstein, but never faced any consequences for it. Again, a bit of artistic license is taken here, because although it's certainly true he died in the Biltmore Hotel's Everglades suite, it's not 100% certain if he was running a speakeasy out of it. The gambling operation has been credited to a man named Ed Wilson, who Fatty apparently paired up with. It's been speculated that it was Wilson who killed Walsh, but again, it's very unclear as to who actually pulled the trigger. Hmm, interesting, so... I guess at some point, uh, Fatty Walsh dies in the hotel. So, uh, we've been given an offer. Will we take that offer? Well, you're just gonna have to find out next time on Let's Play A Golden Wake. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.